All right, guys, welcome to Game Makers. So when you first get to Scratch, you're going to see a screen that looks something like this. Uh, and the very first thing you're going to need to do is sign in. Now, it's really important that you guys sign in and make sure that you're signed in every time you come here, okay? Because otherwise, your work doesn't get saved. And it's really good if your work can get saved. So go ahead and sign in with the username and password that I gave you. If you're having trouble, go ahead and find me. Uh, I can help. So you're going to get to a screen that looks something like this. We're going to be working on the animated name project. So that means we're going to have to start a whole new project. So go up here to the top left here and click create. This will open a whole new project for us to work on. So right here at the very top, we can name our project something uh, like animate a name. And then let's just get right into it. You guys will learn what there's a bunch of stuff here. Don't worry about it too much. I'll explain it all to you as we go along. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to create a sprite. So right now the default sprite that the game gives us is this cat. Now I don't know about you guys, but my name doesn't start with the letter cat. So I'm going to delete them with the little X there at the top and then go choose a sprite. And then we're going to go to letters and we're going to pick from this set down here at the bottom in green here. Now the first letter of my name is K. I don't know what the first letter of your name is. Go ahead and choose that. And I'm going to drag this K right over here to the left so I have some space to work. So sprites can have a few things associated with them. So this is the K here. The K has code. This is the coding part. We can give it instructions like turning or going to random positions. Uh, you know, turn or go back or forward. We can also have it change the way it looks. We can have different costumes for it. So these are different costumes. This is different ways we can have the K look. And it also has sounds. We'll get to sounds in a, a little bit later though. So the first thing I want to do is have this K cycle through some of its costumes. So we can see it has three costumes right here. And so what we're going to do is use the code to change through those costumes automatically. So let's say in looks here, there's a command called next costume. So go ahead and click on that and drag it into the screen, into your workspace here. And we don't want to just have to click on this command to have it change costume. We want that to happen when we click start. So we'll go over to events and then click on the when start flag clicked like that. And now when I click the start flag, we see it switches costumes. But that's kind of boring still. I think I can do a lot cooler stuff with it than that. Uh, so we're going to go over to control here and find a loop. So what loops do is they repeat a command a bunch of times in a row. So for instance, if I say repeat 10, it'll repeat that change costume command 10 times in a row. So now if I click start, whoop, you see, it goes through really quickly. It changes, it does that next costume command 10 times and it goes through it really fast. Now, instead of repeat 10, I think I just want to repeat forever. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. That's the kind of effect I want to see. So. That's actually a little fast for me. I might add in a wait at the very top of control. You can choose to tell it to wait. So if you wait one second, that's very slow now. See, it's taking every one second it changes costume, but I might make it like something like 0.25. There we go. So now every 0.25 seconds it changes costume. I like how that looks. So let's go ahead and add our next one in. Go back down to choosing a sprite, click it, go to letters, and we're going to scroll back down to these and let's do the next letter of my name is an E. So I'm going to do an E. You can pick the next letter of your name. With this E, I think what I want this E to do is sort of like move up and down like this. Uh, but to do that, we're going to have to talk about moving in Scratch a little bit because it's a little different from things you might have done before. So in Scratch, the ways we move up and down are like this. We have this command called change X by. And change x by changes us to the right. If we do change x by 10, like by a positive number, it changes to the right. And if we say negative 10, if we make it a negative number, put a minus in front of it and change x, it'll go the other direction. It'll go left. We can also do that with y. y is for up and down. If we have a positive number like 10, we go up. If we have a negative number, if we put like negative 10, then we'll come back down. That's the basics of how movement works. So now I want to use that to create a sort of bouncing E effect where it comes up and down like this, but automatically all on its own. So the first thing I'm going to need then is a change Y by because I'm changing its height. I'm changing it up and down and we'll make it five. Uh, and then the next thing I need is I want, I don't want to just change by five once. That's pretty boring. Look how that's nothing. That's really boring. 
I want it to change a few times in a row. So maybe I could put in this forever. Of course, if I do that, it just goes up forever and it never comes back down. So that's actually not what I want. Uh, let's try something a little different. Let's try having it go up five times. Or sorry, let's try having it go up 10 times instead. Now it goes up 10, but it doesn't come back down. So what we could do now is go back to motion, grab another change Y, and this time instead of going positive, we'll put a negative, we'll put a minus in front of it, and we'll go down 10 times, negative five. So we go up, so we go up 10 times, we go back down 10 times. So up 10 times, down 10 times. If we put the two together, then when we click it, we go up and down. We do that little bouncing effect. And then we can attach that to the when start. So when I click start, it'll go up 10 times, come back down. Up, down, up 10, down 10. Of course, look, the K is changing forever, and this E, it's only doing it once. So how do I make the E do it forever? Well, really simply, if you go over to the controls, you have this option here called forever. And if you want to make these two loops repeat, you can just drag it around both of them, see? So now these two, these two that make it go up and down, we put those in a forever, and now it does that up and down motion forever. Great. Next letter in my name is an L, so I'm gonna find an L. There it is. And we'll drag it right over here. And I wanna do something a little different with the L. I'm gonna have the L spin, but I'm gonna have it do it, instead of doing it when, it, when we click start, I'm gonna have the L spin when I click space. So while I'm holding down space, the L will be spinning. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to events, and then I'm gonna choose when space key pressed, like this. Then we're gonna go over to motion, and we'll choose, you can choose either one of these, turn right or turn left, and I'll drag it in. Now when I click space, the L moves. But when I click start, notice it doesn't move. The other two move because they're when we click start. The L though is on its own. The L only moves when I click space. Great. So I don't know about you guys, but I repeat some of the letters in my names and I don't really wanna have to type out all the code for these again. Luckily for us in Scratch, we can duplicate our code. So if I have one L and I need another L, I can right click on the sprite and click this duplicate button and it'll give me another one. And it'll copy all of the code on it too. And I'll do the same thing for an E because I have two E's in my name also. And see again, it copies all the code on it, which is very useful. All right, so the last letter in my name is an R, so we'll add one more. Go to letters, choose R, and drag it to where we want it. For this R, let's do something a little different. Let's find in looks, there's an effect called, yeah, change color effect by 25. And what this does is it'll change the color that the sprite is. So as usual, let's throw that in a forever loop so that it keeps happening over time. But how about instead of when we click start or when we click space, we make it when we click the sprite, it starts changing colors. So it stays its initial color when we click start and then when we click on the R, it'll start changing to all the different colors. So to do that, we're gonna find the when this sprite clicked. And now see, we're on the R. When the R is clicked, we're forever gonna change colors. So now if I click start, everything's doing what I expect it to. I can make my L's move. And now when I click the R, it starts changing colors. That's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this, but I think we can do even more. So for one, let's go to the backdrop here. If you go to the little stage thing here, we can go to the backdrop and you can select a backdrop. So click choose a backdrop. Now there's a lot of backdrops to choose from. Personally, I like space. So I'm gonna pick this galaxy backdrop. Now I, have a, now I have a real backdrop. Now this is starting to look good. Awesome. Let's drag these E's down. They're kind of escaping a little bit. Another cool thing is that we can add more than one backdrop. So let's choose another one. Let's also add, I think there's a stars backdrop. There it is. We'll add the stars backdrop too. And just like you can go to costumes on your, on your letters, you can also go to the different backdrops on your stage. So if you go to the, click the stages here, you can click on backdrops, and now we can choose which backdrops we want. So we can remove like this blank white one, and now we have these two different backdrops on here. And we can switch between them, just like we switched between the costumes for the K. So the way we'll do that 
is we can choose next backdrop, just like we had next costume for the K. Here we're gonna do next backdrop for the stage. And then we can again put a forever loop around it. And this I wanna go a little slower, so I think I'll also add a wait one second. Now I'll have that all happen when we click start. And there we go. Now our backdrops are changing and all of our other stuff is happening. It's getting pretty exciting in here. But I think we can make it even more exciting. Let's talk about adding sound. If we go back over to our K here, we have these three tabs, remember, associated with each one of our sprites. So we have what the sprite does, which is the code. We have what the sprite looks like, which is these uh, the costumes. And we have what the sprite actually sounds like. So we're going to add some sounds to this. So the default sound that it comes with is this little pop sound, but we can add others. If you go down to the bottom here and click choose a sound, there's all sorts of things you can add. So you can look through here and choose something you like. Uh, I think I'm going to go for guitar A right now. And then we're going to have that sound play every time we change costumes. So every time this next costume happens, we'll also play a sound. So to do that, I'm going to go over to sounds right here, and I'm going to find uh, in start sound, I'm going to click the little drop down menu and choose a guitar. And then I'm going to drag that right under our next costume. So every time that we change costume, you hear that a guitar play. Let's add another one to the E. So if we go over to the E and go to sounds and choose a sound uh, for the E, let's do let's do chomp. I like chomp. And we'll have that sound play every time we hit the ground. Every time the E comes to the, goes to the top and when it comes back down, when it hits the bottom, it will play that chomp sound. So we'll start sound chomp and we'll put it right here. So this is the part where it goes up. This is the part where it comes back down. When it hits the very bottom, when it's done, it'll play that chomp sound. So let's start it. There we go. That sounds terrible. It's great. One more thing, let's add some background sounds to this because we want like a background music sort of sound going. So if we go to our backdrop, our stage here, uh, you can choose sounds for it. We have the pop sound, but we don't want that. So go down here and click choose a sound. And for this, we're gonna choose one of these loop sounds. If you go to loops, you'll find a bunch of sounds that sort of just like repeat and are like background music. So I think I'm gonna choose dance around and I'm gonna go back to my code for my backdrop and we'll add another one of these. We'll say when we click start, we're gonna to go to control and say forever. And then the sound we're gonna play, this time we're gonna use play sound until done. We're gonna use dance around. So play sound, dance around until done and we'll do that forever. So now when I click start, I click on this. I've got everything going. Beautiful. Oh, that's very loud. All right, so there you go. Now you've created an Animate Your Name project. Uh, I hope you can still hear me over all of this. Uh, I also have a challenge for you guys. I want you to try to add a little bit more to this game. So that might mean adding more sounds, trying to add more sprites, uh, maybe adding more backgrounds, changing the backgrounds, you know, or explore. Try some of these different commands, see what you get. Uh, we'll share these in a little bit and have fun.